Today we want to try and beat every single Pokemon champion and there is a lot of them now as Paul. A lot of you guys voted and it really looks like you want Paul. He's a really strong trainer and has access to some incredibly powerful Pokemon like Drapion, Gastrodon and of course a monster, Electivire and many more. This should be quite an easy challenge but who knows. If we add in some rules like the ones on the screen now to make this a little bit more challenging for ourselves. Also, side note, I won't be playing remakes of the same champion so if we play Fire Red we won't be playing red. Let's get started. First up on our challenge is Pokemon Fire Red and we have the champion for this game, Blue. Our level cap is 61 for this fight and we have a really weird but powerful team. So his lead is Pidgeot and we lead with our main Pokemon, Electabuzz. We outspeed Pidgeot and Thunder Punch for a huge amount of damage but Pidgeot decides to be annoying and throw sand in our face, lowering our accuracy. Blue full restores Burgesus now but we miss a Thunder Punch thanks to the sand. The next turn we Thunder Punch again, this time landing it and Pidgeot throws more sand at us, great. Thankfully, we connect the third time and take down Pidgeot. Blue decides to send out Rhydon now and an Earthquake is definitely coming. So I swap to Murkrow on the move. We go for an Icy Wind here, dealing a solid chunk of damage to him and lowering his speed in the process as he throws some rocks at Murkrow, doing over half and lowering our speed too. We have to switch now. So we can go into Metagross and we eat up the Rock Tomb extremely well. It does barely nothing to us. Then we can fire off a Meteor Mash, taking down Rhydon. On. Arcanine is out now and we swap into our own fire type, Magmar, on the incoming flamethrower. Arcanine goes for a priority extreme speed and we psychic for nearly half. He extreme speeds again and our psychic just misses out on the knockout. I know Blue will heal up the fire dog here so I just go for another psychic. We now have to switch so I go back into Aggron to eat up the extreme speed. We take a flamethrower to just under half before we surf on the waves and take down Arcanine. This brings out Blastoise now and we have a great switch in. It's back to Electabuzz, and the Hydro Pump does a reasonable amount of damage to us. We outspeed, and we hit a Thunder Punch as he sets up the Rain and heals a little bit from his ability Rain Dish, but it doesn't matter. One more Thunder Punch, and bye-bye Blastoise. Alakazam is up, and we have the perfect answer to this in Murkrow. It can't attack us at all. It's actually a pretty long fight of full restores, recovers, and Shadow Balls, but eventually, we finally take down Alakazam. Murkrow just isn't that strong offensively. This leaves his final Pokemon, Executor. We stay in an icy wind to lower his speed and we do actually a massive amount with a critical hit. He just goes for a hypnosis but thanks to our ability insomnia he doesn't put us to sleep. This means with one more freeze of the air in icy wind we can take down the free headed eggplant and defeat blue giving us our first champion victory but there's plenty more to go so let's move on. Lance is a champion in generation 2. We can now use Paul's exact team he faced off in the Sinnoh league with against Ash. So his lead is Gyarados and we lead off with Agron. We are weak to it but why did I lead with him you may ask two words stealth and rocks he hits a waterfall for a good chunk and we get up our stealth rocks he hits another waterfall and flinches us we have to switch now so we can go into gastrodon waterfall still does a solid amount thanks to our dual typing garidos waterfalls again critical hits us and flinches us fantastic time to switch again so we go into our absolute monster electivire waterfall still does nearly half to us however i know i trained up this guy in speed so we outspeed and hit a thunder punch destroying Gyarados and putting an end to his flinches. He sends out his level 50 Dragonite next. Rocks do 25% and then we outspeed and an Ice Punch destroys the first of his three Dragonites. The level 49 Dragonite comes out and gets shredded by an Ice Punch too. Doesn't stand a chance. His third level 49 Dragonite is a problem. It lives. Nah, it doesn't. I'm joking. It dies in one hit too. Charizard takes 50% from Stealth Rocks, so one Thunder Punch and down he goes as well. This just leaves Aerodactyl left. And with an Ice Punch, Electivire sweeps through the whole of Lance's team. This felt good to take some revenge from our last run. Let's move on to Generation 3. Well, technically, this is Generation 6, but you guys wanted to see Omega Ruby, Steven. So here he is, and he has a Mega Metagross. So his lead is Skarmory, and we lead off with Aggron. Skarmory's faster and goes for a Spikes as we set up our Stealth Rocks. He goes for another layer of Spikes, and our Thunder Punch does close to half. He gets up three layers of Spikes, severely affecting our switches and we take him out with a higher roll thunder punch, taking down the steel bird. This brings in now his own Aggron. I decide to be very risky here and see who's faster. Thankfully, it's us and one earthquake and we show our dominance as the best Aggron and down he goes. Claydol is out now and an earthquake is coming, so we swap into our Hunchcrow. Now we can go for a defog and remove all the annoying spikes as he swaps into his Cradilly. I don't want to take a rock move, so I then swap into Drapion and he does in fact throw rocks at us. Thankfully, 
he doesn't get a boost, and it does a good amount though. I hit an Ice Fang doing over half, and he confuses us. Honestly, some things never change. Thankfully, we break through it and hit an Ice Fang to take down Cray Dilly. Clay Doll is back out now, and we hit ourselves in confusion as he sets up a reflect, boosting his team's defense. I choose to switch into Gastrodon now and take whatever move he throws at us, and it's an Earth Power. We are pretty bulky, so we do take it reasonably well. He sets up a light screen, and we go for a surf, doing over half to him. He goes for an Earth Power again, and our surf just misses out on the knockout. This means Steven will full restore. It took a while, but between the light screen boost and full restore spams, we finally take him down on our seventh surf. Now it's our Maldol. We're on 87 HP after the exchange of moves with Clay Doll. I opt to go for a recover, and our Maldol exes us to 21 HP, but it does look like we are healing more than he's doing damage. So we heal up to a healthy amount, and then we hit a surf to take down our Maldol to just under half. One more surf of the wave and our Maldol falls as well. This just leaves Metagross left. Steven Mega evolves and we swap into Honchkrow. He went for his Zen headbutt but it doesn't affect us thanks to being dart type. A bullet punch does close to half to us but our dart pulls critical hits taking out Mega Metagross and giving us a pretty clean win over Steven to be honest. Let's head over to the other generation 3 champion. Wallace is our next champion for Emerald. His speciality is water types but I think we have a good enough team to deal with him. So his usual lead is the scary whale lord and we lead off with our electabuzz. Our thunderbolt takes him all the way down to his sliver as his double edge does a good chunk of HP to us. Wallace full restores him now but we just take him back down with a thunderbolt to the red. This means on the next turn we say goodbye to the whale. Gyarados comes out as it has earthquake but we are faster and one four times super effective thunderbolt destroys him. Next is Whiskash and we have to switch. I go into Ursa Ring now as I see this is a perfect Pokemon to set up on. We eat an Earthquake reasonably well on the switch. We then go for a Swords Dance as he goes for an Amnesia, boosting his special defense. Now we can hit a boosted Stab return and we critical hit taking down Whiskash. Tentacruel is Wallace's next Pokemon. It outspeeds us, but misses a Hydro Pump, and we hit a return that makes short work of Tentacruel, and gives Ursaring another knockout. Ludicolo is fourth, and goes for a Leech Seed over Double Team for once, but a return means it won't get any HP back, and it falls as well. This leaves his last Pokemon, Milotic. It gets a little bit of chip back with Leech Seed, and then goes for a Toxic, the worst move for Milotic to use on us, as we have the ability Guts, powering up Ursaring even more. So a massively boosted return demolishes him, giving Ursa Ring a dominant victory over Wallace. It's time to move on to Generation 4 now. But before we do that, 98% of you are not subscribed yet. So if you like what you're watching and Pokemon, subscribe for more. Back to the video. Cynthia is a champion and she has a strong team with a lot of coverage. We can now go back to what I class as our main team for this run. So her lead is Spirit Tomb and we lead off with Agron. We get up our Stealth Rocks and we eat Dark Pulses very well. So two Earth Quakes and we take down Spirit Tomb. Lucario comes out and we have to swap. We go into Honchkrow, but he doesn't take an Aura Sphere well at all. I stay in and he Aura Spheres again. Honchkrow roosts to see if we can heal more than it does, but it doesn't look like that's happening. So on the next Aura Sphere, I swap into Frostlass. We outspeed and hit a Thunderbolt for half as this Earthquake doesn't do too much damage to us. One more critical hit Thunderbolt and Lucario falls. She then sends out Roserade, but we're an Ice type with Ice Beam. So one move and down goes Roserade as well. Milotic is Cynthia's next Pokemon, but we have really good special attack and a Thunderbolt does over half, as Milotic just sets up an Aqua Ring for HP recovery. So one more Thunderbolt, and Milotic falls as well. Togekiss is next, and takes some Stealth Rock damage. We outspeed, and a Thunderbolt does a massive amount of damage, as the Air Slash does a good chunk to us. I probably should have just Ice Beamed. I stay in as I know Cynthia will probably heal, and she does. So our next Thunderbolt brings Togekiss back down, and paralyzes him. So the next turn, we finish off Togekiss with one more Thunderbolt. This leaves her last Pokemon, and by by far the scariest, Garchomp. Not risking Frostlass, I swap into Gastrodon. Garchomp connects to Dragon Rush, but it looks like we can live another. So I stay in and the Dragon Rush brings us to only 12 HP as we connect an Ice Beam and demolish Garchomp. That was really close to losing Gastrodon then, that would have sucked. With that though, we beat Cynthia pretty easily and can head on to our next champion. First up in Generation 5 is Alder. Unlike Cynthia, he has a wide range of Pokemon with good type variety, 
but some of his Pokemon have a big weakness to fire types. So we lead off with Electivire into a Selgor. A Selgor goes for the move me first, allowing him to steal our move and use it first. So he hits us with a Fire Punch, but it doesn't do too much as our Fire Punch just destroys him for a one-hit knockout. Bufalon is out and the Earthquake is coming, so we get an easy swap into Honchkrow. Now the Stone Edge is coming, so we can double out into Gastrodon and tank the Stone Edge. We are faster than Bufalon and our Scald gives us the burn, reducing his attack stat exactly what we wanted as his head charge still does a good amount of damage to us. He takes some recoil and burn damage so then we go for a recover to get back a little bit of our HP. Alderful restores him and we scald him back down but we don't burn. I go for a scald again and this time we do get the burn thankfully as his head charge is still ruining us. He's going to fall to burn damage now so our best play is to recover and let him take himself out leaving Gastrodon on a nice amount of HP. A Scavalier is up next and we scald burning him turn one. He hits a very weak exit now. We now recover and he goes for a Giga Impact. That still does a decent amount. We recover again on the turn he recharges. This means we can take down a Skevalier with another Scald. Alder chooses Volcarona next and it can't really hurt us except for Hyper Beam, but he can set up and he does. So he's boosting all of his stats with Quiver Dance as our Scald does about half to him. Then we get hit by a massive Hyper Beam doing half to us as our Scald brings him to a sliver. We recover on the turn Volcarona recharges, but another Hyper Beam brings us all the way down to 41 HP. That was a misplay. We then take down Volcarona with a Scald. Druidagon is out fifth and we've got to switch. So I go into Frostlass as he hits a payback for a good chunk of damage. We thankfully outspeed and an Ice Beam looks like it's taking out Druidagon, but he survives and outrages us to only 5 HP. That was way too close. We can then take out Druidagon with one more Ice Beam. This leaves his last Pokemon, Vanillix. We got to switch again now. So I go into our Drapion as his Flash cannon doesn't do too much damage to us. The next turn we outspeed and hit a fire fang and thanks to our ability sniper we critical hit ending him in just one turn and beating Alder. Let's move on to our next generation 5 champion. Iris is our next champion and the majority of her Pokemon are dragons. We have quite a bit of ice coverage so I'm not sure how hard this will be. So she leads off with Hydreigon and a Dragon Pulse does nearly half to Electivire as we hit an ice punch taking him low. His next Dragon Pulse leaves us on only 38 HP HP before we can take down the three-headed beast with an ice punch. This now baits out Agron. It usually automizes, but I won't risk Electivire, so I swap to Gastrodon on the double edge. It does a solid chunk to us, but we outspeed the next turn and take it down with just one Scald. Druidagon is her third Pokemon, and we recover all of our HP as he misses a Focus Blast. So the next turn we hit an Ice Beam that critical hits and makes short work of Druidagon. Haxorus, Iris's ace is next. We need to attack the threat in front of us as it does indeed Dragon Dance and our Ice Beam brings it to the red. Iris full restores, but it's in vain, and we take it all the way back down. Haxorus now attacks us with an Earthquake, doing huge damage to us, but we survive and finish it off. Lapras is next, but it cannot touch Gastrodon at all. We recover as she goes for a Sing, but we dodge it, and we hit a Sludge Bomb. Lapras now surfs, boosting our special attack thanks to our ability Storm Drain. So our next Sludge Bomb does a good chunk, as Lapras puts us to sleep with Sing. Lapras surfs us again, and we wake up and take it out. Now we are plus two special attack for Archeops and we're full HP. His acrobatics does so much damage to us, but a plus two stab boosted Scald takes down Archeops in a single hit, giving us a victory over Iris and Gastrodon put in amazing work. Let's move on to Generation 6. Generation 6 and we have Diantha as the champion. We have answers to most of her Pokemon, so I think this should be a good battle. Her lead is Horlucha and we lead off with Drapion. Horlucha Swords Dance is turn one to boost his attack and our Rock Slide does close to her. Off. He swords dances again, and now this is getting a bit scary as our rock slide takes him low. Diane for now full restores him, and this thing is now at a plus four attack and full HP. I'm worried. Our rock slide does a bit more damage to him, and the next turn he goes for a flying press for a huge amount of damage as we go for a poison jab, taking him to the red. Thankfully, we poison him, so he falls to that. If we didn't poison him, we was in big trouble. Tyrantra and the T Rex is up next, and we swap into Gastrodon, and luckily we dodge a head smash. I thought we may be slower so I go for a recover but we're actually faster and his crunch does a solid amount to us. The next turn we fire off his scold bringing him to the red as he crunches again putting us low. I go for a recover now to restore HP as he
he crunches once more. I decide to finally take out the T-Rex now as Dianthe isn't healing him, so we finish him off with one Scald. Galgeist is out and we actually have to swap. For the first time in many, many runs, he actually hits a move on our Honchkrow, a Seed Bomb, but it does nothing. We outspeed and hit a Dark Pulse for a one-hit knockout on Galgeist. Aurorus is up next and we've got to swap again. I go into Agron and Aurorus sets up a light screen, boosting his team's special defense. The next turn, we can Iron Head though and take down the Ice and Rock Dino in just one move. Now is Gudra. It's got good bulk, but we outspeed it. And then Iron Head does a huge amount of damage and we get the flinch. So the next turn, one more Iron Head and down goes Gudra. This leaves just Gardevoir left. It's weak to steal though and we're full HP. Diantha Mega Revolts Gardevoir and we get hit by a Thunderbolt for over half of our HP. And then we just take out Mega Gardevoir in a super effective Iron Head. Beating Diantha and beating Generation 6 without any issues. How is the person we fight to become champion here and I'm actually worried about Incineroar and his Z move? So first up is Lolan Raichu. We lead off with Gastrodon as it's really our best answer to this thing. He hits the Psychic for close to half and our Scald does half to him and we get the burn. He Psychics us again and I recover but he gets a special defense drop meaning we have to switch now. I go into Drapion on the incoming Psychic to negate it completely. Raichu hits a Thunderbolt bringing us to half as we would knock him out with an Earthquake. Tauros is next it has the ability Intimidate and it's going to go for an Earthquake. Our best swapping is always Honchkrow to negate the Earthquake. Tauroso outspeeds us and hits a double edge doing massive damage and taking a good chunk in recoil as well. I go for a Roost to see if I can stall it but it doesn't look like we can. So on his next double edge that brings us to the red, I go for a Dark Pulse and we take down Tauros. But that leaves Honchkrow practically unusable now. Crabono Ball is Hal's next choice and on the Stone Edge I swap into Agron. He misses so we take no damage. We outspeed now though and can set up Stealth Rocks to chip away at his team when they come in as he goes for a power up punch nearly taking down Agron but with a super effective Iron Head we can deal with the Ice Crab. Now is a huge problem in Cineroar. It could Z move, Earthquake or just Flare Blitz and we don't really have a great switch apart from Gastrodon but he's already took a bit of damage and I don't want to risk losing him. We have no choice so we swap into Gastrodon as he goes for an Earthquake bringing us to only 87 HP. We have to swap here, Gastrodon is just too valuable to lose so I go into Drapion on the Darkest Lariat but it still does a good chunk of damage, even though we resist it. I fire off an Earthquake to get off as much damage as I can, as Incineroar goes for a Z boof, Inferno Overdrive. Unfortunately, there is no way Drapion lives, and here we suffer our first death of the run that I wanted to try and avoid, but we didn't really have a choice. Now, we can go into Electivire. With Incineroar weakened and a threat of a Z boof gone, we Earthquake to take down Hal's Ace. Up next is Leafeon, and it annoyingly charms us, lowering our attack harshly, as our Ice Punch does basically nothing but we get the freeze. This gives us a free switch into Frostlass. One Ice Beam can demolish Leafeon who stays frozen throughout the rest of the battle. This leaves his last Pokemon now Noivern, the Dragon and Flying type. It takes Stealth Rock's damage but outspeeds us and hits a Dark Pulse. Luckily we tank it reasonably well and can end Hal with one more move. Our first death of the run in this fight but I think it was unavoidable. Let's move on to the switch games. First up is Trace from Let's Go Pikachu. His Pokemon only have three moves, but he has a good type variety and a Mega. We are two monster Pokemon to our team now, in Needle King and Gyarados. His lead is Pidgeot and we lead off with Electabuzz. I made sure I didn't have max AVs this time so we wouldn't just sweep for his whole team with one Pokemon. So Pidgeot Mega evolves, but we're still faster and one Thunderbolt demolishes him as always. This brings out Vileplume. We hit an Ice Punch for a decent amount as he charges up a Solar Beam. We hit an Ice Punch again and he's now under half but his solar beam critical hits taking us down to 83 HP. However the next turn we can freeze our hand again and take down Vileplume. He brings out Rapidash next and we've got to swap. So I go into Needle King who resists a Flare Blitz but still takes a good amount from it. We have insane move coverage though so one Surf gets a one hit knockout on the Flame Horse. Now it's Slowbro. We have to switch as I don't trust a one hit knockout with Thunderbolt so we go into Gyarados. Slowbro opts to set up a light screen boosting the team's special defense. Our Gyarados is a physical attacker though so a crunch does a good amount to him as Gyarados takes very very little damage from Psychic. We crunch again and get the defense drop meaning Slowbro is definitely done for. So the following turn we take him down with one more crunch. Now Jolteon comes out but we have a great wall for this in Needle King. It can't touch us. Jolteon quick attacks us for very little damage as our flamethrower does close to half. We exchange the same moves before Needle King can finally take Jolteon down and we do it with an Ice Beam. His last Pokemon is Mario 
Marowak. I know it has a ground move, but I choose to stay in and go for Surf, thinking I can possibly take it down, but we don't. And he critical hits, putting Needle King on only 4 HP. Trace will heal now, so we just stay in and attack. We take him back down and then the next few turns are literally just Trace full restoring him and we keep hitting moves. He full restores a total of three to four times before we can finally put an end to him and beat Trace. It's time to move on to Pokemon Sword and Shield. The champion for Sword and Shield is Leon. His team is pretty strong. We now have to substitute in Weavile and Ninjask as Honchkrow isn't available in these games and we lost Drapion. So his lead is Aegislash and we lead with Agron for one move and that is Stealth Rocks. We get up our rocks and he hits a sacred sword dealing huge damage to us. We stay in and go for an earthquake as he doesn't king shield so Agron can take him down in just one attack. Haxorus is next and Agron isn't in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet so after being a solid Pokemon throughout the run we let him fall so we can get a safe switch. But rest easy Agron. We can now go into our newest member Weavile. We outspeed and connect an icicle crash and there is no way Haxorus survives and he falls. His next Pokemon is Dragapult but it's going to suffer the exact same fate as Haxorus. One icicle crash after rocks damage and the second dragon returns to his ghost friends. Now it's time for Mr. Rhyme. It takes some damage from Stealth Rocks and that's enough for our Weavile to get a stab knockoff and deal with a dancing Pokemon. Now he's in Teleon. I don't trust us to take it out and Weavile is pretty frail. So I swap into Ninjask as he just goes for a tearful look. We Swords Dance and Inteleon is just spamming tearful look reducing our attack. He finally attacks us and does over half as we bring him pretty low with a Metal Claw. But I choose to sacrifice Ninjask Jask here for a switch into Electrovire as this is exactly what I want to deal with his last Pokemon. So we go into Electrovire and it's time to Dynamax. We hit a Max Lightning to take down Inteleon and set up Electric Terrain, boosting our Electric moves more. So his last Pokemon is Charizard and thanks to Aggron instantly loses 50% of his HP to Stealth Rocks. We outspeed and with Electric Terrain there is zero chance he can attack us so Electrovire in its last battle defeats Leon and we beat Generation 8. Now on to Scarlet and Violet and our last champion. The last champion is Jita for Generation 9 and she has a pretty unique team. We have some new faces on our team as well like Gliscor and Torterra. Her lead is Esparfer and we lead off with Torterra. I set up my hazard Stealth Rocks and she hits a Lumina Crash doing a good chunk of damage and lowering our special defense. Knowing I probably can't take another attack, we swap into Weavile. We outspeed Esparfer and a knockoff destroys the Ostrich in just one move. Avalug is Jita's second Pokemon and I go into Ursa Ring. It takes 25% to Stealth Rocks and then we fire off a close combat, taking it to the red, but this lowers our defense and special defense, so our body press demolishes our bear and we lose another Pokemon. I go into Gliscor now to give him some time to shine and we connect to Stone Edge to deal with Avalug and take it down. She then sends out Veluza and we have a good Pokemon for this, Torterra. We go back into him, then Torterra outspeeds Veluza and we hit a Woodhammer, demolishing him and taking a little bit of damage in recoil. Fourth is Gogo and we swap into our Frostlass. We outspeed and an Ice Beam brings him to the red as he just hits a very weak horn leech. So the following turn, Frostlass can take out Gogo with one more ice attack. Fifth is King Gambit, the evolved form of Bisharp. We swap into Gliscor again as I think we practically wall this thing and we hit our Earthquake bringing him to about 30% as his Catalcleave does nothing to us. One more Earthquake and Gliscor collects his second knockout. This just leaves Glamora left. It terrestrializes into a pure rock type, Gliscor outspeeds and earthquakes bringing Glamora to the red as it then throws toxic spikes on our team thanks to its ability. It hits a dazzling gleam but Gliscor tanks it like a champ and one more earthquake takes down Glamora, beating Jita and beating every single Pokemon champion with Paul's team. So our total death count for this run was 3, which is not bad at all. Paul is a very strong trainer with some powerful Pokemon and I think it showed in this challenge. However, after losing so many in our Team Rocket run, I'll take the fun run we had this week. If you have any suggestions on who or what Pokemon you'd like me to do this with, let me know in the comments. If you liked the video, leave a like and subscribe for more Pokemon content. As always, I appreciate you watching the video, I love making them and I'll see you in the next one.